I don't know, Carol. He's definitely not himself today. Who are you? And what have you done with Comanche? <laughs> a gallop will calm him down. Stevie, the lesson starts in 20 minutes. Not far, just at the driveway. Come on. Come on, Comanche. Hey, wait up! Faster, come on! That's an ugly habit. first impression. I don't even know how to rhyme. Yes, you do. Your camp counsellor said you were a natural, remember? Wow. You want to meet the right kind of people, don't you? You shouldn't be riding in the driveway. Mom! You should learn how to drive! Oh. Come on, Stevie, we have to calm them down. Come on, boy. Come on. Great first impression. Now they hate me. You could have said you were sorry. I beg your pardon? Nothing. Keep away from those two, Lisa. Lisa Atwood. The new student. Have you talked to her mother? Why? She's worse than a mare with a first filly. I don't know. <laughs> I can handle it, Mum. Uh, Mr. Regner. Max. Eleanor Atwood. And this is my mother. Hello. We spoke on the phone. Yes, as I said to your mother, Lisa does have riding experience. She just wants to brush up on her skills. Sounds good to me, Lisa. Now, I don't want her in any beginner's class. I want her riding with her own age group. Thanks, Eleanor. We'll, uh, we'll take it from here. Well, I was planning to stay for the lesson. Mrs Atwood, we like to encourage independence in our riders right from the start. It builds confidence. Yes, but I like to supervise. And a greater sense of responsibility. Mm. Mum, it's OK. Well, I, I'm not oh, sure... Oh, look, she'll be fine. Let's go, Lisa. Carol, Stevie, this is Lisa. She's going to be in the lesson today. We've met. Those are my two best students. They're probably just busy right now. Oh, really? Call me when you're done. Sure. I'm going to put you on Patch today. He's a push-button pony. Push-button? A bomb could go off and Patch wouldn't even blink. Mm. 
Maybe they haven't spent much time with horses. You don't have to spend time around horses to know they don't like being hit by a car. It's okay, it's me. Are you gonna jump the wall today? We're gonna try. Don't sound so nervous. You've jumped that high before. Yeah, but that was a fence. This is a solid wall. I don't know. She thinks it's too wide or something. We've tried three times and never made it. Today is different. I can feel it. I think you're going to like Patch. And this is my horse, Delilah. You're putting her on Patch? Yes. Lisa, this is Veronica D'Angelo. Hi. Hello. I'll help her tack up. You will. Thanks. I'll show you how to tuck up my horse first. It'll be easier. This is Cobalt. He's beautiful. I know. He's the most expensive horse in Willow Creek. There's his tack. Go ahead. Wait, that's too far back. Rive it up towards his shoulders. And watch out for the stirrups. Not bad. See you there. What about Patch? Better hurry up. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. You're Lisa, right? Yes. Patch is ready for you. Uh, Veronica was just showing me how to, um... Yeah, <laughs> she has a way of doing that. Thanks. <coughs> What's he doing? <laughs> I'd say he's flirting with you. Hey, Christy, do you want to sleep over at my house tonight? Red. My mum, I was looking for you everywhere. You were absolutely right. There was a problem with my stirrups. Good, Christy. Glad to be of help. I still feel a little uncomfortable on the trot, though. Do you think I need a new saddle? Get real? That saddle couldn't be any more than six months old. What do you think, Red? That's a pretty good saddle. Do you think you could change my life, Red? <laughs> OK, everyone. How many days to the mountain trail overnight? 21! That's right. So we're going to work hard today. Let's go. That wall looks huge. That's nothing. Cobalt jumped way higher than that last summer. She looks nervous. Because her horse is scared of the wall. She never makes it. <laughs> See? It's OK, Carol. Take your time. Set it up right. You can do it, Carol. Excellent, Carol. That was so cool. I wish I could jump like that someday. Thanks. But Starlight did all the work. I told you, that was so perfect. Anyone else want to have a go? I'm in a few are. Stevie, maybe you shouldn't. Don't worry, he's OK now. Has she done this before? Yeah, but that was when Comanche was calm. Make it. 
It's okay. Turn that off. Turn it off. I'm trying. Are you okay, Stevie? Yeah, fine. I'm sorry. Cell phones have no place in the ring. Understand? I'm so sorry. I thought I turned it off. Don't talk to me. Don't worry about her, Lisa. Some people just don't know how to control their horses. She could have been hurt. Where, where? Learn to hold on next time. Come on, let's go to the lounge. It's where everyone goes after riding. I can't. My mum's coming to pick me up. So call her on yourself. Around horses? But Max said... That was in the lesson. Just call. Are you nuts? Didn't you hear Max? Hello? Hello? Um, Mum, hi. Could I stay here a bit longer? With a friend? Of course, darling. I told you you'd need someone. Call me later. Can you pick me up later? We're gonna hang out here for a while. Why didn't you call me, Veronica? I left a very important lunch meeting so I could be here on time. I didn't call because I don't have a cell phone. Don't start that again, darling. We talked about this. You have your own phone and fax lines. And what about the pager that Daddy gave you? I want a cell phone. Everyone has a cell except me. Even her. Well, all right. I'll call Daddy and I'll ask him to pick one up for you, okay? Call me when you're done. You have a pager? Yeah. Listen to this. <laughs> Isn't that great? Come on, let's get changed. Hey, Kelly. She's totally like Veronica. Did you see the way Veronica glommed onto her? There was no escape. Lisa doesn't seem to mind. She's new. She doesn't know anyone. Veronica's using her because Christy dumped her for Ray. Well, one Veronica's bad enough. Lisa doesn't belong here. Fred! Did you hear what happened in the lesson today? Yeah, that was bad luck. Bad luck? That new girl's a loser. We all make mistakes, Christy. I bet you don't. You should have seen Stevie. She headed for a real nosedive. Have you ever had a bad fall? Thanks, Wendy. I reckon if you haven't fallen off a horse, you're just not riding enough. You know all about horses and riding, Red. But I've never seen you ride. Red, are you ready to go into town? That tractor's ready to be picked up. Right, I'll bring the truck around. Red. You told me you had the money to go. I did, but then I saw this really cool shirt. Stevie! And... Don't worry, I have a plan. All I have to do is make 600 chocolate chip cookies. Freaks. They're so immature. Ooh, Max, Lisa scared my horsey. I'd be upset if it happened to me. Please. Like Stevie knows anything, she doesn't even have her own horse. I could sell a box for like five dollars and say it's for charity. That's not a plan. That's jail time. You should come. Hello, I was talking. What? Sorry. I was saying you should come on the mountain trail overnight. Christy will be drooling over red. 
and I don't want to be stuck with the horse geeks for two whole days. I'd love to. So, Carol and Stevie are coming for sure, right? Unfortunately. I could get Max to let you come. He doesn't usually let beginners go. That would be so amazing. You owe me. I'll be right back. Grab me a drink from the fridge, okay? My cookies are good. Yeah. As hockey pucks. My brother's team won the championship, didn't they? <laughs> you have every right to hate me. I screwed up, but I'd never hurt your Comanche on purpose. I can't believe my mum called right in the middle of a lesson. It's like she has to check on me every five minutes. Mums are so lame. Yeah. Her mum died. Carol, I didn't mean to. Here comes your new best friend. Maybe she wants to hear all about your lame mother. Lisa, did you get my drink? Let's just go. They're never gonna be friends with you. You can suck up all you want, but they'll still hate you. Why do you have a curry comb? You never actually groom cobalt yourself. Have you seen it or not? No. Thank you. You ready to go? I am. The Comanche's still jumpy. I'll take him for a ride and see if it calms him down. Okay. See you on the trail. I'm coming, I'm coming. Max is taking the advanced riders on a trail ride instead of a lesson. Oh, look. Cool, huh? It's the smallest cell in the world. Better not let Max see that. Don't worry about him. I only have to make one call to my pager. What? If Comanche freaked when your phone rang, imagine what he'll do when my pager goes off right under his saddle. Let's see how good a rider Stevie is when her horse goes mental. You can't! That's really dangerous. You tell anyone about this and I'll make sure you don't go on the mountain trail overnight. Carol! Where's Stevie? Out on Comanche. Why? We've got to find it fast. Veronica's done something really bad. What? I'll tell you on the way. Please, Carol, you've got to trust me. Okay, climb on. Hold on. Easy, steady. Try taking him out ahead, Stevie.
Especially, sir. <laughs> that was so great, Lisa. You were so great. Thanks. What was that? You saw what happened in the lesson. You knew Comanche was already hyper. Were you trying to kill her? You are so finished at this stable. I'm talking to Max. I'm sure he'd love to hear all about your plan to hurt me and his school horse. I found this on the hill. I'd hate for you to miss an important call. Problem? We've got it covered, Max. Why doesn't that ease my mind? These two tell me I should let you come on the mountain trail overnight. What do you think? Really? I'd love to. One condition. You ride your own horse. No more circus stunts. Deal? Deal. <laughs> I'm sorry about your mum. That's okay. You didn't know. That means he's having fun. Fred changed his food. That's why he's been so spooked lately. I bet almost being hit by a car didn't help. He's over it. And so am I. Thanks for saving my butt out there. It was the least I could do after what happened to the lesson. It wasn't your fault. And I guess I sort of have a bad temper. Oh yeah, and I only sort of like horses. <laughs> Veronica pretty much hates me now. Join the club. <laughs> There's only a couple of rules. You have to be totally horse crazy. And you have to look out for each other. It's the perfect club. Now all we need is a name. What about the saddle club? I like it. Very horsey. Saddle club. I can work with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's Carol? Exercising racehorses for David McLeod. It's the coolest job. my mum if I can get out my clarinet lesson if I'm going to go on that trip. Excuse me. At least you have the money to go. I thought your parents were going to pay for it. So did I, till my dad decided to teach me the value of a dollar. Okay, the trip costs $75. How much do you still need? Seventy... Four. Oh. Back early. I suppose you want your paycheck. It's Prancer. What happened? We were galloping in the South Meadow, and she pulled up lame. Uh huh. Stand. <coughs> uh, useless animal. Strain tendon. Third time this month. Ah, put her in the stalls. Should I call the vet? What for? Spend a fortune on an uninsured horse? Got a lot to learn about the racing business, Carol. But she's in pain. 
She'll be put out of her misery. First thing tomorrow morning. She's supposed to groom Cobalt. Ever heard of grooming your own horse? Can I help it if she likes working for me? Carol doesn't work for you. She only does it because she loves Cobalt. I'll look after Cobalt for you. What? Of course it'll cost you. How much? Ten bucks a job. Five. Deal. I have to talk to you guys. Emergency saddle club meeting. What's wrong? Someone forgot the password. No, they have to work on their secret handshake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stevie. Spotless. And when you're done, clean my saddle. Sir? Yes, sir. But Prance is so sweet. You should have seen her when I put her back in her stall. It was like she knew something bad was going to happen. Well, I'm sorry, Carol, but it's the reality of the business. Not everyone's in it for the love of horses. He's going to turn her into dog food. She belongs to David McLeod. There's nothing I can do. You said Pepper's getting too old, so you need another school horse, right? Prancer would be perfect. I need a school horse, guys. Not a highly strung ex-race horse with a bad leg. What if we leased her? We could all pitch in and take care of her. Yeah, then you could see what a great school horse she would be. I don't have the room. We could do extra work around the barn, you know, to pay for her board. She'd be our responsibility. And what? You'd quit school and work here full time? <sighs> That's not an option, guys. I'm sorry. The answer's no. Why are you cleaning Veronica's saddle? It's a long story, Mrs. Rag. I hope it has a happy ending. This isn't the onset of teenage angst, is it? It's Prancer. You did everything you could, Carol, and you can bet that Prancer knows that. Thanks. Can you ask your dad to buy her? She already has Starlight. He said we can't afford to board another horse. I even offered to use my trip money. What? You can't. You have to come on the mountain trail overnight. Stevie, Prance is worth more than any trail ride. You're right. I'm sorry. He said no anyway. We can't let Mr. McLeod destroy her. You heard Max. It's Mr. McLeod's horse. What are we gonna do? Kidnap her? Yes. Yes what? No, Stevie, we can't. Tell me. Where would we hide her? What are you talking about? The old Regnery Barn, on the other side of Pine Hollow. Can you please tell what me? What about her leg? We'll keep her there till it's better. And then we show Max what a great horse she is. Then he won't be able to say no. We have to do it tonight. What are we doing? We're kidnapping Prancer. Bean, Cobalt stall is a mess. Veronica, I don't have time. <sighs> she believes the greedy make the needy feel the way they do. And everyone can make a difference, even me and you. He believes that destiny is following your dreams. He says you gotta say the things you feel and always feel. The things you need, and they buy each other coffees in a Bronte cafe, and they talk about the music they heard last night on Rage. Ain't nothing more to lie. Ain't nothing more to lie. Ain't nothing more.
just leaving now, Veronica? Yeah. You must be exhausted. You've been here all day. I'm so tired. Mm, I guess so. Imagine how Stevie must feel. What do you mean? Well, I saw Stevie working for you today. I've never seen Cobalt's store look so clean. Oh, that. Stevie needed the money and I wanted to help her out. You know, Veronica, it's, it's one thing to ride your horse. But the real bonding happens with the daily routine of looking after him. Now, just imagine how wonderful Cobalt would be if you got to know him just a bit better. Actually, Cobalt and I are doing fine, Mrs. Reg. And my parents pay a lot of money for me to ride here, so I don't think they want me to waste my time doing barn chores. But thanks anyway. Good night. It's late. Will you stop playing and go to bed? I can't go to my lesson on Saturday if I haven't practiced. I know what you're trying to do. She's trying to get out of her clarinet lessons so she can go to the mountain trail overnight. Melanie, go to bed. How am I supposed to sleep with all this noise? That is enough, Melanie. Now off you go. And you, Lisa, will stop spending all your time at Pine Hollow and start practicing your clarinet during daylight hours. <laughs> Point. It sounds like you're killing a duck. Off to bed, both of you. Yes, Bubba. We're so late. Where's Stevie? I'm here. Queen Veronica wouldn't let me go. She get up. Why didn't we leave her in the stall? She wanted to lie down. She's got colic. If we left her lying down, her guts would have knotted up and she could have died. We have to get her outside. What if Mr. McLeod sees us? We have to keep her walking. The old regnery barn is only a few minutes away. I'm calling the vet. You want to go to jail? We can't let anyone know we're here. If we keep her walking, she'll be OK. What about her leg? We don't have a choice. We have to keep her moving. doesn't usually come with a fever. Let's get this blanket off. Lisa's right. We have to call the vet. Carol, we can't. Mr. McCloud. I don't care about McCloud. We have to save her. I don't want you to get in trouble because of me. It was my stupid idea to kidnap her. Well, if you hadn't have thought of it, we wouldn't have made it to Prancer in time. This is a saddle club. We stick together, right? Thanks. I'll call Dr. Barker.
Can't help thinking about Carol and her horse. It's not Carol's horse, Mum. It's David McLeod's. Carol's Carol been, been raving about Prancer ever since she started working there. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Me? Nothing. You know McLeod. Unfortunately, yes. There are men like McLeod with his passion for the almighty dollar. And there are those of us who just love horses. I thought I knew which camp you were in. It's not my horse, Mum. I was there when we bought the school horses. Delilah, Hatch, Comanche, Bark. I've thought about that. Have you? Yes, we don't have the room. Why can't anyone understand that? Your decision, Max. When did the colic start? Tonight. She was fine this afternoon, and she's really hot, too. She's definitely running a fever. Any change in her routine lately? She's lame in her left front leg. I've seen that strained tendon twice this year. It's pretty quiet in there. That's a bad case of colic. What's that? Oh, it's an anti-inflammatory to treat the colic. It'll take the pain away. And I'm going to prescribe a broad-spectrum antibiotic for the fever. She'll need to have a shot every day for seven days. She'll be OK, though. The leg should heal all right. The fever concerns me. How much will this cost? Don't worry. I'll send the bill straight to McLeod. No. I mean, uh, uh, um, we'll take care of it. Aren't you Karen Hansen's daughter? Yeah. What are you doing out here? Uh, we came to visit Prancer. In the middle of the night? We do it all the time. Yeah, all the time at night. What's she doing in the old Regnery barn? We walked her over here from Mr. McLeod's because of the colic. I don't know what you're up to, but you obviously love this horse. Let's call it 200 even. Can you please give us a moment? Okay. I've only got 75 that I saved up for the mountain overnight. Where am I going to get the rest? Don't worry, I've got it covered. Will you take a deposit? We'll give you the rest of the money tomorrow. Sure. No, Stevie, you can't. That's your trip money. You were right, Carol. This horse is worth more than any trip. Need anything else, Max? No, that's it for today, Red. Thanks. So, you're going to buy this new horse or what? What? McLeod's thoroughbred. Oh, not you too. You need another young school horse. Yeah, because Pepper's getting old and McLeod's a monster and, and Carol's attached to Prancer. And look at Bark. I already know the top ten reasons why I should buy this horse. And the answer's still no. You got it? Forget I said anything. Just another horse, right? That's right. No food. You can give her a little water if she'll take it. Keep her walking. But whatever you do, don't let her roll. She's gonna call Max for sure. We're so dead.
What do you think you're doing? A uh, uh, prancer had colic, so we you had... broke into my barn and stole my horse. I know. The vet called me. Well, Prince is sick. She needs help. I'm calling the police. I'm going to have you charged with trespassing, horse theft, and cruelty to animals. We were only trying to save her. Funny. She was fine when I checked on her. You came busting into my yard, and suddenly she's sick. All you care about is getting your money from the slaughterhouse. I'd watch that mouth of yours. <laughs> She'll try to be more polite. Why don't you, Stevie? You know these delinquents? I asked them to bring you my offer. What? I'm looking for a new horse. Carol told me about Prancer. She sounds perfect. <laughs> for horse meat, look at her. David, for a businessman, that's a disappointing sales pitch. I think my offer's more than fair. Oh, and uh, let me deal with the girls. Oh, no. They broke into my barn. And saved you from finding a dead horse this morning. Judy Barker called me. These girls got to Prancer just in time. Well, don't just stand there staring at me. Let's get this horse home. Horse napping. I cannot believe you guys. What were you thinking? If we waited till tomorrow, she'd be dead. We wanted to call you, but you said you didn't want her. You must think I'm a monster or something. You said, I don't need a high-strung ex racehorse with a bad leg. Okay, yes. But I didn't mean taking the burden of a sick horse entirely on your own shoulders. Well, we didn't know she was sick until we got there. When you stole her? Yeah. After sneaking out in the middle of the night? Uh-huh. Without telling your parents? Pretty much. She's obviously a special horse. What you did demonstrated real dedication and loyalty. You reminded me why I stay in this business. You know, when I first met Bark, his owner was going to put him down. My mum bought him for me. And Bark's turned out to be one of the best school horses Pine Hollow's ever had. And so will Prancer. I'm counting on it. But it means a lot of hard work and extra time at the stables. Whatever we have to do, it's worth it. Now, go home. I called your parents to let them know you were safe. And call me overprotective? But I don't think you should make a habit of sneaking out to steal horses in the middle of the night, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Can you believe it? out shopping for camping gear. She says she never wants to hear O to Joy again. Guess playing the same three bars over and over again will do that. Stevie, what are you doing? You have to wrap Cobalt's legs. No. You know what? I know. Guess you're not going on the trip then. Actually, I am. Seems spending all my cash to save a horse means I do know the value of a dollar. My parents coughed up the money. <sighs> I'm so happy you get to go. You have to take lots of pictures for me, okay? I don't want to go if you can't. The trip won't be any fun if we don't all go together. She's beautiful, girls. Well done. And you've got to take care of Cobalt, because you know Veronica won't. You can keep an eye on Cobalt yourself, Carol. But I gave all my money to the vet. We can't separate the Saddle Club now, can we? Judy told me that you girls paid for Prance's vet bill. Doesn't seem right that you should be uh, paying for a horse that belongs to me and Max. Prance is our responsibility now. So, I expect to see you all on the mountain trail overnight next Saturday. Thank you, Mrs. Reg. <laughs> Now, does this make me an honorary <laughs> member of the Saddle Club? Does it? <laughs> leaving for the mountain trail overnight in half an hour, whether you're ready or not. You sure you've got everything, Lisa? 
How'd you fit everything in that little bag? My dad's a colonel. We had inspection at 0600. Lisa, honey, you forgot something. I knew it. The kitchen sink. <clears throat> An emergency whistle? But, Mom... You've got to be prepared, Lisa. See? Have fun. A whistle? Congratulations, you're now officially queen of the geeks. Ignore her. Come on, let's go load up the horses. Here, we have a scout. More fun for riding her, though. I have to get my bag. doesn't like being loaded. You should be careful. He might... Great. Anyone could have rounded up Cobalt. But anyone didn't. Stevie did. Don't you have something to say to her? Thank you. There you go. She totally showed you up. You're not going to let her get away with that, are you? Don't worry. I won't. <laughs> You can't reach me on the trail, but Mrs. Red will be here, and the vet's on speed dial, and, uh, oh, in case of fire. Use water? <laughs> I know. Would you relax, Max? I've got it all under control. Oh, sorry, Christy. That's okay, Red. Are you ready to go? I saved you a seat next to me in the van. Ah, oh, thanks, but I'm not going. What? Why? Someone has to help Mrs. Reg look after Pine Hollow. Come on, let's go. I'm not going. What? I've changed my mind. I've... I've got a cold. <coughs> yeah, right. What's going on? Red's not going. And if he stays, I stay. Set. Come on, Veronica, let's go. Oh, what All right, doing? everyone in. Everyone in. <laughs> Can't wait, let's go. Finally, Veronica. Yeah. What took you so long? on. Great. Christy's at Pine Hollow, and I'm stuck with the moron Tabernacle Choir for the whole weekend. Have 
you see my sister Lisa? She forgot her hair dryer. They already left for the mountain trail overnight. Oh, okay. Why didn't you go? My mum's making me go to my sister's birthday party. Like I care. She's not even double digits yet. Wait till she is. Lisa thinks she knows everything. I'm Ashley. What's your name? I'm Melanie. I like your horse. His name's Dime. He's a pony. Want to help me groom him? Cool. I'll go tell my mum I'm staying. Wanna get some water for the horses? Right behind you. Where's Lisa? Oh, uh, she's fixing your tent. It's another first for Lisa. <laughs> Doesn't she want any help? No, nope. she wants to do it all herself. Wish everyone felt that way. Veronica's such a spoiled brat. She doesn't deserve a horse as good as Cobalt. Cobalt doesn't deserve someone like her. I'll be right back. That tent's not going to sit up itself. I thought we were sleeping in cabins. This is inhumane. What's inhumane is the way you treat Cobalt. I don't think I need another lecture from the Saddle Club. That's exactly what you need. Everyone has to help out Veronica. And since Carol's packing up Cobalt for you, why don't you find something useful to do? OK, everyone, gather around. <coughs> Oops. I'm so sorry. You're so strong. Do you work out? No, I work. Plus, playing guitar keeps my arms in shape. You must love the mountain trail overnight, Red. Less stalls to muck out tomorrow morning. Yeah, too bad it's only once a year. Mm. I trust Max left his usual brief instructions. Uh, uh, six pages, front and back. <laughs> <laughs> How's your cold, dear? <coughs> Much better, thanks. You should go home and get some rest. Now, I give my horses six drops of eucalyptus in a nose bag filled with straw. I'll remember that. In your case, one drop on a tissue. Looks like it's just the two of us. <laughs> More like the four of us. <sighs> OK, listen up. Wendy will ride up ahead with the younger riders, so I'm trusting the rest of you to follow the rules. The Martin family has kindly consented to let us use the back 50 acres of their property. Please keep to the marked trail. Now I want all of you to pick riding buddies and stick together. Aren't you coming, Max? No, he can't. He has to stay back and make Max's magnificent, marvelous, meaty, mouth-watering mountain trail chili. Chili? He couldn't think of anything to cook that started with M. <laughs> <laughs> What are you standing around here for? Let's go. Watch where you're going. I'm sorry, Patch is acting weird. If you don't know how to control your horse, you shouldn't be here. He's got an inter patch. He's never done this at Pine Hollow. He's happy to be on a trail ride. That's right. Horses get just as excited as we do when we go someplace new. <gasps> Ow! Lisa, oh, no. are you all right? Yes, are you okay? <laughs> you okay? What happened? I don't know. I, I think so. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I started slipping. Your girth is loose. But I'm sure I tightened it. Patch puffs out when you put his saddle on. I know that, but it's hard to get it tight enough. Don't worry. All beginners have trouble tucking up. <coughs> hey, what are you still doing here? You should go home with that cough. What? Oh, no, it's fine, really. I'm feeling so much better now. So, I could help if you want. I mean, since I'm here. Oh, that's OK. I can handle it. I don't mind, really. It'll be fun.
You sure? Okay. So where should we start? Uh, you can start here. We'll meet in the middle. Do it in half the time. Thanks, Christy. This place is amazing. <coughs> what a perfect day. Could you guys sit behind the bushes? You're ruining the view. So much for a perfect day. Don't worry. I don't think she'll be staying long. Stevie, how childish. <laughs> get it off me! Get it off me! <laughs> oh, there's my rubber spider. It didn't scare you, did it? Uh, nice throw. Try putting a spin on it next time. Are you guys on the mountain trail overnight? Yeah. How'd you know? My parents told me I'd find you out here. You should stick to the trails. There have been wild animal sightings around here. You never know what you might run into. Wild animals? Like what? Panthers, wild dogs, poisonous snakes, your average bloodthirsty man-eaters. Yeah, I thought I saw some killer deer. <laughs> I'm Phil Marston. I live here. I'm Steve. Hi! Oh. I'm Veronica D'Angelo. Veronica! <laughs> Are you okay? You're so clumsy. Here, grab my hand. I'm really sorry. <laughs> seems nice. And cute. Yeah, he looked gorgeous, laughing at me while I nearly drowned. The water only came up to your waist. That's not the point. He just stood there with Veronica, laughing at me. I bet he let go of my hand on purpose. <laughs> See? I told you, Phil's a creep. <laughs> parents belong to the same country club. Isn't that funny? Huh? Oh, yeah, hilarious. So does Stevie have a boyfriend? Are you kidding? Who'd be interested in her? To. I could ask Max if he could stay for dinner. Yeah, that'd be great. Really? Good. And maybe after dinner we could go for a hack, just the two of us? Can you just wait a minute? There's something that I've got to do. Sure. Don't look now, but there's one cute creep heading your way. I'll go find Lisa. She's probably pretty sore from the ride. Get back here. Don't leave me alone with... Hi. Him. I thought I'd find you here. Great detective work. I'm camping here. Where else would I be? Look, I'm sorry fell in the water. I was only trying to help. Honest. By laughing at me? Big help. I didn't mean to, but you have to admit, you look kind of funny flailing around in the water like that. I was not flailing. Maybe it was more like waving. Stevie, wait. Oh, brother.
<laughs> Great! Thanks. No problem. It was easy. I just wish I could help you more. Really? Because that one still needs to be cleaned, if you're up to it. Uh, I'll do it in a second. I just have to answer this. This better be important. Red was just about to ask me out. Of course it's important. I met a guy, Phil Marston. He's so hot. How hot? Picture Red, only our age and rich. Okay, tell me everything. For some reason, he's chasing after Stevie. He probably feels sorry for her. So what do I do? Easy. You make him feel sorry for you. How? Just get thrown off Cobalt. You want me to get bucked off my own horse? No, you don't really get thrown. You make it look like you did. Then when Phil figures out you're hurt... He'll come riding to my rescue. It's perfect. I know. But how will Phil know where to find me? Figure it out. I have to go make sure Red doesn't leave. I thought he was just about to ask you out. He will, eventually. Knock, knock. Who is it? Me. Are you OK? I'm fine, just unpacking. Yeah, that can take forever. I'll be out soon. <coughs> Megan, I'm just going to take Cobalt for a quick ride down that trail over there. I was going with Phil Marston, but he's busy, so if I'm not back in half an hour, could you tell him? I don't want him to worry. Veronica, he's right over there. Why don't you tell him? Thanks, Megan. Oh. So you live way out here? It's so far away from everything. It's only half an hour from Willow Creek. And out here, I get to ride Teddy every day. Great. Guess you better be heading home. DB, don't be so rude. What? I was just thinking about Phil, because, uh... Max doesn't allow strangers at the campsite. And if he told us once, he told us a thousand times. I never heard Max say that. He says it all the time. Hey! Go. Max gets ugly when he's mad. Hi, Max. Hiya, Phil. How are your folks? You know each other? Sure do. I met Phil when I talked to his parents about using their land. Has anyone invited you for dinner, Phil? We're having my world-famous chili. I told you, he's just like her. Veronica said she'd ask if I could stay. Hmm. Must have slipped her mind. But you're more than welcome. I'd love to. the stalls. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. 
No problem. I mean, it was great hanging out with you. Maybe we could grab something to eat. Oh, thanks. But I've still got a lot to do. That's OK. I meant after, when you're done. And I could help you more, too. No, you've done enough today. <laughs> they pay me to be here. <laughs> then you could buy me a soda. Actually, thanks to you, Christy, I'm probably going to get out of here early. That means I can make it to my band rehearsal. Band rehearsal? But I thought... Thanks again, Christy. If it weren't for you, I would have been stuck here all day. Hey, Wash. I think I can make it to band practice after all. I'll be out of here as soon as possible. Hey, what are you still doing here? Nothing. Well, not nothing. It's just... So you're in a band? Yeah, I just told you that. And actually, I'm running late, so... I love music. Maybe I could come and hear you play sometime. Now? Sorry, but we never let anyone sit in on rehearsals. Oh. It's kind of a band rule. Look, I've got to run. Uh, if you need anything, just ask one of the other stable hands. Or Mrs Reg. Wait! You can't go. It's Bark. What about him? He's limping a lot. I think he might be hurt. Really? OK, I'll check him out. There you go. Is Lisa ever coming out of her tent? She's feeling a bit embarrassed. What's so bum between friends? <laughs> so peaceful. Hey, you're right. OK, where's Veronica? I rode into camp with her. That's weird. Cobalt's not tied up. Maybe she took him out again. Max said we weren't allowed to. Like that it stopped Veronica. Maybe we should go find her. She could be lost. With my luck, she'll be back in camp bugging me any minute now. Hurry up! The van is leaving for the mountain trail overnight in half an hour, whether you're ready or not. Come on, let's go. I'm not going. What? Red's not going. And if he stays, I stay. I'm Phil Marston. I live here. I'm Steve. Hi! I'm Veronica D'Angelo. Veronica! <laughs> this better be important. Red was just about to ask me out. I met a guy, Phil Marston. He's so hot. Tell me everything. For some reason, he's chasing after Stevie. He probably feels sorry for her. So what do I do? You make him feel sorry for you. Help! Somebody help me! I have to go make sure Red doesn't leave. I thought he was just about to ask you out. He will, eventually. Turn around, you silly horse! <laughs> I don't know. He looks okay to me. That's so weird. He was totally limping. I don't know what happened.
Veronica. You're worried about Veronica? No, I'm worried about Cobalt. I bet you she's faking her disappearance to get back at me for the spider gag I pulled on her. Bill, Veronica told me to tell you she went for the ride without you. You better go, Phil. Wouldn't want to keep you away from Veronica. What? I don't know what she's talking about. She said if she wasn't back in half an hour, then I was supposed to tell you. She thinks you'll worry about her or something. What? I don't even know her. We were never supposed to go on a ride. Veronica's making it up. Sounds like her. What's she up to? We should tell Max she's gone. Who's gone? It's no big deal. Veronica's just looking for attention, as usual. She's pretending to be lost, so Phil will go looking for her. Veronica's out in the woods alone? How long has she been gone? Not long. Half an hour. She's fine. She's probably sitting on a rock doing her nails or something. Clearly spooked, but other than that, he's fine. But where's Veronica? Wendy's in charge while I look for Veronica. I'll be back soon. Let's go tack up. You guys are going? But Max will freak if he comes back and you're gone. Not if we find Veronica. There's tons of trails. Max can't look on all of them. Exactly. We'll find her faster if we've got more riders out looking. OK, let's go. Thanks, but we're fine on our own. Look, I'm not saying Veronica's in any danger. But... Remember when I told you that there are wild animals around here? I thought you were joking. I was, kind of. There aren't any blood-sucking man-eaters, but there are wild dogs. Really? A couple of farmers have seen packs of wild dogs on their land. That's weird. They usually stay away from people. They attacked a mob of sheep and they're still around. They must be starving or their puppies are around or something. Then we'd better find Veronica fast. I'm coming with you. Why? If something attacked us, what could you do that we couldn't? I didn't say I would protect you. I grew up around here. I know the trails. But if you really don't want me to come, we I mean... We don't have any time to argue about it. Let's just go find Veronica. What's happening? Veronica's lost. We're going to look for her. OK, I'll get my things. Ow! Lisa, it's more riding. I'm coming. Okie doke. Probably all sitting around the fire, stuffing themselves on Max's disgusting chili. While I'm lying out here, practically near death. <sighs> Wait till I tell my parents about this. I want a full refund. Come on, Jenny. Come on, Jenny. 
You just wanted to be in the lead, and since I've got the faster course, you had to push me off the trail to stay in Glenn, front. quit it. We're supposed to be looking for Veronica. I was, before I got cut off. I haven't seen any sign of her. Which way do we go? I don't know. What do you guys think? That, that way. way. Real helpful. That's totally the wrong way. If we turn right, we stay on the main trail. It's the safest way to go. That's why we should go left. If Veronica was on one of the main trails, we would have seen her by now. And besides, the best way to find someone who's lost is to be lost too. Who's with me? We shouldn't go off the main trail. Okay, let's try the main trail, and if we don't find Veronica, we can go back this way. Sounds good to me. Come on, Kamichi. Looks like it's just you and me. Stevie, come back here! She can't go off on her own. What if something happens to her? I'll catch up with her. better than me at everything. Stevie and I have been riding since we were kids. You've just started and you're already on an overnight trail ride. That's pretty good. I guess so. I'm sorry if I've been giving you too much advice. It's just I know what it's like when you first start riding. I bet you're a natural. Huh. You should have seen me after my first overnight trail ride. Ah, I couldn't sit down for three whole days. Come on. It's true. I even had to bring a pillow to school. It was <laughs> totally humiliating. <laughs> you think that's funny? <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carol, but bringing a pillow to school, even I'm a better rider than that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Can anybody hear me? Anybody? Would you wait up? What are you doing here? Looking for you? Taking off like that was a really dumb thing to do. For your information, I didn't take off. I was just looking in a different part of the woods. And who said you had to come running after me anyway? It's dangerous out here. Come on, let's go back to Lisa and Carol. No, I'm looking for Veronica. If you think it's so dangerous, why don't you go back home? Fine, I will. Fine. What are you waiting for? I said go home. I can't go home. Neither can you. What are you talking about? We're lost.
Wait, you can't go. I mean, it's too late. Nah, Walsh said they were late starting, so I can make rehearsal after all. Maybe I should come with you and help carry your guitar. <sighs> Thanks, but I've got it. Oh, I almost forgot why I needed you. I can't find Bark's bridle. Isn't it in the tack room? That's what I thought, but I can't find it. Can you help me, please? <sighs> can't it wait? I really need it now. Please, it'll only take a minute. OK, but then I'm going. It's kind of like helping with the horses. What are you little freaks doing? That's Barks. Mrs. Red said we could. Well, stop it. That's Red's job. Let him do it. Ah, you found Barks' bridle. Wow. Did you two clean all these bridles? Thanks. You guys are the best. Thanks to you, I'm out of here. I owe you guys. Maybe you could take us out, you know, to thank us for all the work we did. Great idea. Uh, why don't the three of you go for pizza? It's on me. Yes. How can we be lost? You said you knew your way around. I did know until you decided to take a shortcut. I was fine until you showed up. Well, excuse me for trying to help. I told you I don't need your help. Oh, yeah? So, which way do we go? That way. I don't remember coming from there. If you remembered, we wouldn't be lost. Come on, it's worth a shot. Great. Just great. I'm stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Cold and broken. Nobody even cares enough to try and find me. I hate everyone. And I hate camping. Could my life get any worse? Maybe Max has found Veronica by now. I hope so. It's getting late and I'm tired and hungry. So starlight. Do you think we should head back to camp? Yeah, but first we have to find Stevie and Phil. Veronica! 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 Familiar? Yeah, I think that's the third time we passed that tree. Do I have something on my face? No. Well, then why are you looking at me like that? I wasn't looking at you like anything. Can't you figure out how to get us out of here? Thank <laughs> you. 
It's okay, Comanche. Phil, look at my ankle. I think it's broken. What happened? <laughs> Go away! Get them! Yes, baby, use this! Go away! Get out of the way! They don't give up, do they? Not unless their pups are around. If they're protecting their den, they won't leave until we're dead. Any other happy thoughts you'd like to share? Nice doggies, good bloodthirsty man-eaters. Uh. Ah! Did you hear something? Help! Veronica, we're coming! We're on our way! Help! Get up! Talk about perfect timing. What happened? Oh, nothing much. Lisa just saved your butt. Yeah, using the emergency whistle that her mom gave her. Remember the one you made fun of? Well, uh, I was just joking. Can't you guys take a joke? I think what Veronica's trying to say is, thank you. Yeah, you totally saved us, Lisa. Now aren't you glad you overpacked? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? If your little Saddle Club reunion is over, can somebody give me a hand? Veronica! We're over here, Max. Is everyone okay? I'm hurt and they won't help me. Well, will my head be okay? Like it ever was. <laughs> you have a small graze, but it doesn't look serious. I think my ankle is broken. Phil will have to help me back to camp. Can you move it? <laughs> no. It's probably just a bad sprain. What do you know? I'm sending you home to get checked out by a doctor, just to be safe. I'm sure you'll be fine. Great. You should consider yourself lucky. It could have been a lot worse if the Saddle Club hadn't shown up. Don't you have something to say to them? Thank you, Saddle Club. <laughs> I heard you guys were heroes yesterday. Stevie was. She fought off the wild dogs. Lisa helped too. We all did. Wow. Life at Pine Hollow must be pretty boring after that. No way. We're so glad to be home. We just wish we had a chance to say goodbye to Phil. Phil who? Stevie's new boyfriend. He is not. <clears throat> is he around this tall? Blonde hair and blue eyes. How did you know? He's standing right behind you. What are you doing here? I signed up for Saturday lessons. I really like you. Your instructor, Max. He's the best. So, see you Saturday, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, wait. Look, I'm sorry. You were right. I shouldn't have gone off the trail. I'm sorry too, you were right. If we'd stayed on the trail, we wouldn't have heard Veronica at all. She's actually smiling at him. Do you think they like each other? And you don't have to thank me for helping you out with Veronica. Thank you? Why would I thank you? I was handling the wild dogs fine by myself. In your dreams, they were coming right for you. Sounds like love to me. <laughs> that was all part of my plan. What plan? You know, the plan to be <laughs> 